Welcome to this video on feedback, giving and getting peer feedback on thesis or research writing. I've prepared this video for a course that I'm teaching because in class we will be um, working in pairs or in groups where people will bring writing to the class and then their classmates or their peers will give feedback on that writing. But I thought I would also post it on YouTube because you might be forming a writing partnership or starting a writing group. And it's really helpful to uh, know how to give feedback, particularly if you want the group to last and you want to have a successful writing partnership. Giving useful feedback is um, a, an absolutely wonderful thing to have as a writer if you can find someone who can give you useful feedback. So, um, and writing partnerships are really important in writing because of the nature of academic writing. Um, you know, one of the things that you, you know, we really need to understand about academic contexts is the fact that feedback on writing is something that is really common. It's, it under, underlies everything that we do. And a, you know, a good example of this is the peer review process. So when you send a paper out for review, it goes. To, the editor will send it. The editor of the journal will send it to two or three peer reviewers, who will read through the paper, provide comments, and give you feedback. Um, you know, once you finish your undergraduate years and start doing graduate work, you you will always get feedback in some form, one way or the other. So you never really write on your own. There's always an element of feedback. So being able to provide feedback that is helpful um, on writing is a really useful skill to have. So this is the peer feedback process. You get given a piece of writing by the author, you read it closely, you could highlight text or write comments in the margins of the text and then you provide that feedback to the author. Now um, you know this is just a suggestion but if you were working in class with me if we were in the classroom, you, um, the author would bring a written document and the classmates or peers would uh, write comments on that document so that the author could take that document with them when they leave. But now that we're in the online environment, you might have to provide electronic feedback either on the document or separately. Um, and you can also give verbal feedback, which I really encourage, to the author as well. So there are two common responses to writing, uh, criticism and feedback, and they're often really confused. Uh, and people often think that because this is an academic environment, we need to provide criticism. And I think th that term criticism is being confused with critique. Um, critique involves a kind of reasoning, ac reasoned academic judgment where you go through a number of different steps where you're looking at um, the kind of logic or internal consistency of that document. And it's not the same as criticism. Criticism is, you know, focuses on the person, it's hurtful and it aim, aims to wound. Feedback, on the other hand, um, is, is separate from the writer because you're focusing on the writer's intentions and the writer's purpose and goals. Um, and it's supportive and it provides a response that the writer can use. So, for example, a writer might be trying to experiment with something new. Um, and because it's a new way of writing, they may not be producing it in the way they want just yet. And you're, you know, if you give feedback or if you give criticism, criticism to say this is terrible, that's not going to be helpful for that writer at that point. Um, but if you're looking at the writer's intentions and you're saying, okay, you intended to try this experimental way, it works up to this point, but after this point, it doesn't work at all. Um, the writer can then do something with that. So providing a response that the writer can use should be your guiding light when you're giving peer feedback. Can the writer use this? And two types of feedback or criticism is the gut feel. And this is a, a kind of reaction to the writing where you, where you, you know, you're... <sighs> I want to say emoting, but maybe it's not always emoting. This is just not right. I don't like it. It's superficial. It's vague. 
um, versus criterion-based feedback, where the writer tells you to look for specific things, you focus on those specific criteria. So, for example, if the writer says, can you see if my purpose is clear in this paragraph, then you can say, yes, I can see it here, or no, it's not clear at all. It, if you put a purpose statement somewhere in here, that might help. Then it's much more specific and the writer can do something with that. So your role in providing feedback is to create a better text. Um, and it's to role play a reading audience and to reflect what that audience is experiencing as they read the text. Because that's what's going to be helpful to the writer. If the writer knows that you are you know, bored to death or um, you lost interest at certain points, they know then that they can do something with that. Your role is not to destroy the author's confidence and not to turn the paper into your own work, even though it might be tempting. So there might be ideological clashes. You might fundamentally disagree with the writer. You might come from a dis different discipline where um, you know what counts as knowledge or evidence is very different. And you may not have the same epistemological base, but you can still provide valuable feedback as long as you focus on providing feedback that is useful. Now, I want to break down the kind of feedback that you could provide and to prioritize it. Uh, and the three layers that I've provided here are foundational, middle ground, and surface level. Now, um, often when people give feedback on writing, they begin with the surface level issues, the grammar, the spelling, the typos. And what I would suggest, particularly, you know, at the beginning stages of a project is to focus on the foundational. Um, actually, I think at any stages of a pro uh, project, but I think particularly at the beginning, focus on the foundational elements. You know, if you're looking at a proposal, for example, has the research been well conceptualized? Is there a clear research problem? Is there a clear statement of purpose? Can you identify the knowledge gap in that piece of work? Is there a conceptual framework if that's relevant? If those foundational things are in place, then you can move on to the middle ground um, things to look for. Has the person adhered to the genre conventions, the formatting? Um, the, ha has the writer met the audience's, the potential audience's expectations? Um, so, for example, if you're writing a literature review, has it, you know, does it conform to a literature review uh, genre? Is there flow to the document? Is there a structure? Um, is there a coherence to it? That's what you're looking for in the middle ground. And then you can look at um, the surface level issues after that. So prioritizing feedback, depending on where the person is in terms of their drafts, is really important. Um, so just to emphasize this, prioritize the foundational issues. To me, these are really important. The more surface level issues can be fixed fairly easily. But if, this, if the foundational issues are not in place, then it doesn't matter how much you edit those surface level things. It, it won't change the structure of the document. So particularly in the early drafts, think about these foundational issues and provide feedback that the writer can use. So here are some criteria that you could focus on. Now, you know, this is just a, an example, and I'm, I'm going to go with the proposal as an example again. But, you know, there are all sorts of criteria that you could use depending on your discipline and what you're trying to write and your purpose for writing. And as a writer, you want to actually tell your peer reviewer, your classmate, what you want them to look for. But let's say this is a proposal then the reviewer could look for the research problem. Is it clearly articulated? Um, is it articulated as a problem? Is there a rationale for doing the research? Is it convincing? Is there a logic between the rationale and the problem? Or perhaps, you know, sometimes writers are so close to what they're writing, they, they assume that the reader will know. So just pointing out where there are some gaps um, that the writer can fill in to make it clearer would be useful. And looking for the argument in the proposal, actually articulating what the argument is, and um, looking at what evidence has been provided and is the evidence convincing. 
And then the genre conventions, you know, does the paper adhere to a typical proposal outline? Are the components that you would find in a proposal in there? Would everything that a reader would expect, you know, is that in that proposal? That's what you're looking for. You know, if you're stuck on how to give feedback, begin by asking questions. What does this mean? I'm not clear what this concept means here. Can you explain it a bit more? Why did you include this? It doesn't seem relevant to me. I can't see how it fits in the flow. Now, the writer will probably have an explanation and a logic for it, but maybe there's some linking that's missing, and so it's not clear to the reader. Be as specific as you can. So instead of saying, this is vague, um, write, I don't understand this concept. Can you provide more context or background? Instead of writing, this is confusing, write, I lost the thread of your argument here and actually highlight the point at which you lost it. Instead of writing, good, because even if you're giving positive feedback, <laughs> it can be unhelpful. Uh, being specific, this example moves your argument forward is really helpful because then the author knows the next time they want to do something like that, that this worked and they can use it again. Uh, a really good technique for giving feedback is to, uh, to verbalize, to actually out loud say what, um, for example, the argument is. So, so you would say to the author, so your argument is, and then tell them what you've read, or your research problem is, and then give that to them, or the purpose of your research is. If you can articulate it out loud in your own words, then the writer can see if their message has been communicated. And they will be able to tell immediately if it's, it hasn't been communicated. So if you say back uh, what the author is looking for, um, the author can tell immediately. It's a really good, quick technique to give feedback. Now, as the writer, your job is to listen. Um, and one thing I should have put in here, but I didn't, is also to, to provide criteria for feedback. Um, but it's also to listen. Our instinct is to get defensive immediately because we feel so tied to our writing. But, you know, just keep quiet and listen. Don't jump in immediately and start defending your writing. Rather watch and notice. So watch as they're reading, watch where they're marking things, where they stop reading, uh, where they're going back, you know, to reread things. Um, because all of that is useful information for you. And then ask questions yourself. Was this understandable? I was trying to do this. Did that come across as I intended? Um, so that you can get specific feedback that you can work on. Peer review on writing, helping your classmates with their writing, really helps you and your writing. Because what, what you're developing is your eye as a reader, uh, a critical eye as a reader. And reviewing someone else's work helps you to develop your own writing because you begin to read your own writing with that reviewer's eye. Um, so I think it's an incredibly important skill. And besides that, I think working together um, well, I'm not only I think this, it's, you know, there's all sorts of literature, research literature out there that shows this, that if you work together with someone else, you know, if it's, even if it's a partner or if it's in groups, you are more likely to finish whatever it is that you're writing and to successfully finish it. Um, so I, I think it's incredibly important to develop these reviewer skills and to find a partnership or a group that you can work with. And my last word is be helpful when you review, but be kind as well. Okay, best of luck with your reviewing, and I hope you form very productive and helpful partnerships and groups. Bye.